adapting very quickly to a new environment, okay? Fast integration. This is something that is major for a perpetual traveler, but also very major for everybody else, in my personal opinion, because it, when you change to a new country, okay, especially if you stay for a short period of time. So for example, you're a snowbird and you're gonna stay there only six months. The last thing you want is that you just manage to become comfortable in the last few days before you leave and then you're gone. This is, this is sad, especially in my case, because I'm normally not doing the same country two times. So the thing is, is that I wanna adapt very quickly when I land. The sad part of it is I'm Canadian. Okay, if you're American, if you're European, it's a bit trickier than if you were Chinese because there's no such thing as Canadian towns, but there are Chinatown everywhere. Now, my point is, if you're Chinese, you're gonna come into, let's say, New York, no problem. You go to Flushing, you go to Chinatown in Manhattan, no problem, full load of Chinese. Easy for you to just go there, start talking to people, say, hey, I just arrived, any kind of resources, any help you can give me. People relate to you very quickly, then you speak the same language, people have been experiencing the same thing, so you can easily do that. Also, they will point you to the things that they know uh, would suit you. So if you're, let's say, a student, they know you need cheap housing, you know, used furniture, something to integrate fast this way. In my case, for example, where, you know, I'm going to go with um, people either at the UN, the embassy, or other people I know around the world, where I'm going to say, okay, I need, you know, like serious housing. We have big budgets, 5000 a month for rent. Don't mind if it's, you know, like a, an apartment in downtown core. Doesn't matter. So they'll point you to that kind of things, and then you're going to get more what you want, right? So the advantage of this is that you will not have to linger much in wasting time trying to learn everything by yourself through websites and blogs that normally don't offer much. The second thing is it depends where you're moving. Now, if I'm Canadian and I'm moving to the United States, for example, right now I'm in uh, Westchester, New York. Well, the point is, no problem. Home Depot, Costco, Amazon, it's all the same. The, okay, they use miles here. I have to adapt in the old stuff, the, you know, the Fahrenheit and the inches and whatever. I've learned that in school in history class way back when. Nobody else is on earth uses it. But anyway, it's not too hard to adapt to that. The rest is still fine. A medical care system, okay, whatever. You have insurance, you know, you read your contract, you go to the doctor a few times, you get, you get the point. It's not the same thing if you move to Africa. It's not the same thing if you move to the Middle East or for Asia, for example. But the advantage in Asia, in the Middle East and Africa is that you, as a person, is different. And a foreigner, depending what, sadly, you know, like, it depends on the country. If you're Canadian, for example, when I was in Lebanon, it was absolutely a breeze. I speak French. A lot of people in Ashrafiye in, uh, in Beirut speak French. It was very easy to integrate with them. I lived in Ashrafiye, so everybody speaks French. Automatically, you integrate quickly. Uh, Canada has tremendously helped, like 300,000 refugees in 1973, uh, 74, 75. So Canada is really well respected there. So I automatically got a lot of friends and help and people, you know, like talking to me, you know, you got a bridge and a point in common very quick. So that helps. Now, when I arrive in the Philippines, you know, again, you're a foreigner in the Philippines. They look at you differently. Okay. For them, you're rich, you're, you're different, you know, so they, they, they really kind of like open up to, to foreigners over there. So that helps a lot. So these, Okay, to help to integrate, it's fast because then you're going to meet people, you're going to talk to them, okay, where do I go eat, what's the best restaurant, where the cinemas are, and then you integrate relatively quickly. So this is what you want to try to do. Find people of your own culture in order to be able to have somebody that can understand you and give you the right advice of what you need to, go, you know, where you need to go and what you need to do. And the second thing, okay, forget your embassy, okay? I, I, I'll, I'll say this thing, don't waste your time with your embassy, okay? Most of the time... They're not, they, don't, they do paperwork and stuff like that. They don't have time for that minute little thing. And on top of that, if your embassy is from a first nation and you're in a developing nation, let's say uh, uh, the U.S. embassy in the Philippines, where I used to live right across it uh, when I was in uh, Manila, forget about it. You need a month, two months appointment to even just go there 
to even get a visa. So forget about just showing up over there and ask a few people, hey guys, uh, can you help me? Uh, where do I find, uh, you know, whatever. They won't help. They don't, they don't have that kind of assistance. They may have a list in case of emergency to evacuate you out of the country, but that's all they'll do for you. So forget your embassy. The Chamber of Commerce, stuff like that, that might be able to help if you're in business. Then we can discuss that later down the road. So I hope this little video was useful. If you want to have way more about how to integrate quickly, there is on the medical level, on the school level, on any level, I have tons of videos. Uh, most of the list are on this channel or on my website. So please take a look. I hope this video wasn't too long and too boring. But uh, integration is very important. So I wanted to make sure that you had at least a good base. Take care.